What I don't want our families to do is sign up for a program, invest a lot of money in a program when they're looking for exposure and get an experience. When they need development and they're getting exposure. Because if you're getting exposure when you need development, you're neglecting development and that college coach is not going to call you because they saw you. They're going to call you because they saw you and you have the skills that translate to the next level. Hi, I'm Donald Watts with Watts Basketball and we are Game Changers for Life. Today I am bringing to you the seven things you got to do before you AAU. So AAU in the past has come under a lot of criticism. I've even been critical of it. Uh, guys like Kobe Bryant, uh, LeBron James, uh, some of the top coaches in the world have been critical of AAU. So what I want to do for you today is teach you how to get the most out of that experience because it's not AAU that's the problem. It's how much AAU and the lack of information that's available for parents to make the best decisions for their kids in AAU that is the problem. I had a tremendous experience. Some of my best friends uh, came from AAU, but I also have been disgusted by some of the things that I see out here uh, in the basketball community and some of the different levels. And, and parents paying an astronomical amount of money and investing an astronomical amount of time and not getting anything uh, in return is something that's very disturbing to me. And so I want to make sure that that doesn't happen to you. So I say that, now let's get into the seven things that you got to do before you AAU. High school basketball season is ended and most players will go right into trying out for an AAU program without doing the number one thing, which is review your high school basketball season and refresh. You don't want to go from a high school basketball season, and the, the, the strains and the stresses and the pressure and all that mental stuff, the physical stuff, and just jump right into trying out or playing for somebody else without taking a couple days of physical rest, but also uh, a couple days to think about the thing, your successes, your failures, and the things that you want to improve on in the next six to nine months. So the number one thing that you have to do is review and refresh. Review your high school season and then refresh, like feel anew going into your next spring, summer AAU basketball season. Uh, after you review and refresh, we're moving on to step number two, and that's you got to give yourself a postseason skills evaluation. Uh, where are your skills? Where's your jump shot? Where are your handles? Where are you at physically? Uh, how fast do you run a mile? What are you bench pressing? Contrary to popular belief, a lot of people's skills, if they're not following a, a mindful skill development program during the season, they regress because even though you're spending more time playing basketball, you're six days a week, you're spending that time on the high school schedules program. You're, you're spending that time on the coaches program. You're spending that time with the majority of that time being dedicated to the development of team. And I find that very few players understand how to do that 15 to 20, maybe 30 minutes every day that keeps those skills confident and elevating along, uh, along the course of a season. So at the end of the season, whether you've done that or you haven't, I recommend doing the skills evaluation. Simple stuff like how many shots out of 50 can I make from 15 feet? How many shots out of 50 am I making from the three-point line? Uh, how fast, what is my conditioning level? What's my mile time like? Uh, where's my strength? How much am I bench pressing? Those kind of things are what you want to kind of assess and evaluate. How are my handles feeling? Um, before you go into making a decision on what you want to do next, you have to understand where you are now and where you want to go. Uh, and that takes us right into step number three, which is making an individual development plan. Ideally, your postseason skills evaluation will be a part of a process that is a routine from you, which is like before every season uh, and after every season and in the middle of every season, you have checkpoints where you want to make sure that your skills are steadily progressing. Uh, ideally, you want to have a time in, in the year where you're not on anybody else's schedule or program and you're focusing entirely on your skill development so that you can make skill developmental jumps where you just, you know, and during the season you gradually improve, gradually improve. 
you stop playing games for a while, focus all your time and energy on one to three areas that you really want to improve so you can make huge gains and then go back uh, to playing again. It's very important and critical at this time that you do a postseason skills evaluation and from there develop your individual development plan that relates to what you were able to do during the season, what you want to do long term, and where your skills currently are. And then with that individual development plan, it's a commitment to a daily, weekly, monthly routine that's yours, that's unique to you, it's unique to your skills and ability, it's unique to your own unique goals and objectives and the things that you want to accomplish out of basketball. Uh, and, and that's not anybody else's responsibility. You know, it's your responsibility and your responsibility only and it's your commitment to making that goal come true and your daily routine is really the most important part of that process your individual development plan staying true to it regardless of outside circumstances now what it's time to do is get your off the court business in order there are a lot of people who have goals and objectives and focus primarily on the basketball side of things neglecting other features that relate to their goals. What I'm talking about here are, is your schoolwork, you need to get with your counselor, understand your 16 core courses, know where your GPA is, get your SAT test scheduled, get registered uh, with the NCAA at 2.3.org, and make sure before you make any commitments to anybody else that you are actually on pace and eligible for the NCAA and qualify for the type of school that you dream of going to. I see so many athletes that put so much attention on the court and families, they put so much attention on the court. Then when they earn that very unique opportunity, they haven't taken care of their business, the absolute things that they have to do on the skill work, missing the opportunity that they worked for their entire life. Don't let that be you. Get your business in order before you go try out for an AAU program. Now, what it's time to do is it's time to budget your time and money, right? Now, AAU programs, there's a variety of different AAU programs, there's a variety of different qualities, there's a variety of different objectives. But what you wanna make sure is that you have the time in order to develop the skills that you need to accomplish your goals and that you have the money or the resources that are going to enable you to participate in the AAU season, not put your family at, in risk, and that any money and time that is spent is not spent, but it's invested, and that you're mindful about the time commitment and the financial commitment, and it fits proportionately to you and your child's goals. So that's a very important step. And just to think about it, like if you, if you live, I know people live on the outskirts and they will commit to traveling two hours uh, each way to a uh, AAU practice or program. You live in Mount Vernon or uh, even further out and you wanna play for a team in Seattle and you make that commit and you start doing that at a young age and you're, you're committing to two hours travel each way. Like God bless the parents who are willing to do that. But you have to think about if you're doing that three times a week, two practices and then games, let's say four times a week because you're in a tournament, you're going, that's 16 hours a week. I want you to think about are there better ways that you could spend that 16 hours a week? You might have the money that it takes. You might have the resources as a family that can get your child back and forth up the freeway or whatever, but would that child be better served shooting 16 hours a week? In our program, for instance, you can get 300 shots up in an hour. And in those 16 hours, you can get 4,800 shots a week. If you do that over the course of a month, you're talking about upwards of 20,000 shots. And if you do that for six months, we're talking about uh, 120,000 shots. Who's gonna be better? The person that was driving or the person that was shooting? The person that's shooting is gonna be the person that's more prepared to play at the next level than the person that's driving. So this is where I want our families to, to really look at uh, budgeting, both time and money. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Just because you can afford something financially, doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. And if we're trying to accomplish this goal of playing college basketball or whatever your goals are, I want you to be clear about that. That's what these seven tips are about. We want you to be clear about what your goals are 
and be mindful about the decisions that you make and the commitments that you make so that you can give yourself the best chance of one, having a positive experience and two, accomplishing your goals and dreams. The last step in our seven steps, we're at number seven, is now to research and find the right fit. And what I mean by that is every AAU program, like I said before, is not the same. It's not a one size fits all. Once you've gone through those first six steps, now you develop, we talked about developing your primary objectives, you have to find a program that fits those objectives. Now your goal could be, your, your primary objective could be exposure. And if your primary objective is exposure, you're going to want to get on one of the top programs and make sure that they're playing in the tournaments, in the top tournaments, where coaches are and that they are focused primarily on showcase events where college coaches are there and you're looking for exposure and you're looking to earn a college scholarship. There are programs that will put you in a lot of tournaments and you won't be in those events. That's fine if that's not your primary objective. Another family's player's primary objective could be development, right? If I play, you know, small forward in high school, but I know I'm going to have to play point guard in college, then, and, and I'm a young player, and I'm in a development, what I'm going to want to do is find a program that's going to give me the opportunity to get repetitions in playing the position that I want to play at the next level, which is a different objective. The objective is not to get on a team where I can go play in the biggest, baddest tournament and win championships. Our objective in this scenario is development. I play out of position in high school. I know I'm not necessarily the best point guard in the city or the state or whatever and wouldn't make that top team as a point guard this year. But what I want to do is train and develop as a point guard so that next year when I try out, I can make one of those exposure related teams in the position that I'm going to play at the next level. Very important to understand uh, somebody else's objective. I know people, and they might not be honest about it, whose primary objective is just to have a great basketball experience. And so they want to go play for a team that's going to go to Las Vegas and go to Disneyland, and they want a, you know, a social network to be around. That's cool. And if that's your objective, that's fine too. But what I don't want our families to do is sign up for a program, invest a lot of money in a program when they're looking for exposure and get an experience when they need development and they're getting exposure because if you're getting exposure when you need development you're neglecting development and that college coach is not going to call you because they saw you they're going to call you because they saw you and you have the skills that translate to the next level that can help him keep his job so you want to think about that as you choose AAU programs when you come from a high school program uh, to going into your AAU program. If you haven't played varsity basketball, I would not be worried about exposure. I would be worried about my primary concern or objective would be development. I want to know how I can get to be an all-conference performer in my conference in high school. And I'm going to design a program my, uh, that mixes with development, skill development, uh, gameplay, all of that stuff in the offseason that's going to allow me to do that. I want to be a first team all conference performer. I want to be a second team. I want to make varsity. Uh, those are the kind of things that should be guiding your decisions uh, during this offseason uh, when you're down from your high school basketball season and deciding what AAU program that you want to play for. I'm Donald Watts, Watts Basketball. If you ever have any questions, concerns, uh, about any of our videos, please comment below. And if you want some mentorship as a family to help navigate this crazy world of youth basketball, don't ever hesitate to hit us up. Check us out at WatchBasketball.com or you can email us at info at WatchBasketball.com and we would be happy to help you find the right fit for you.